The Canterbury Tales by Geoffrey Chaucer, edited by D. Lang Purvis. The Cook's Tale. The Prologue. The Cook of London, while the reeve thus spake, for joy he laughed and clapped him on the back. Aha! quoth he. For Christ's passion this miller had a sharp conclusion upon this argument of herbage. Well said, Solomon, in his language, Bring thou not every man into thine house, For harboring by night is perilous. Well ought a man advised for to be, Whom that he brought into his privity. I pray to God to give me sorrow and care, If ever, since I hight Hodge of Ware, Heard I a miller better set a work. He had a jape of malice in the dirk. But God forbid that we should stint a here, And therefore, if ye will, vouchsafe to hear a tale of me, That am a poor man, I will tell you as well as e'er I can A little jape that fell in our city. Our host answered and said, I grant it thee. Roger, tell on, and look that it be good, For many a pasty hast thou let in blood, And many a jack of Dover hast thou sold, That had been twice hot and twice cold. Of many a pilgrim hast thou Christ's curse, For of thy parsley yet fare they the worse. They that have eaten in thy stubble goose, For in thy shop doth many a fly go loose. Now tell on, gentle Roger, by thy name, But yet I pray thee, be not wroth for game. A man may say full sooth in game and play, Thou sayest full sooth, quoth Roger, by my fay, but sooth play, quad play, as the Fleming saith, And therefore, Harry Bailey, by thy faith, Be thou not wroth, else we departe here, Though that my tale be of an hostilair. But natheless I will not tell it yet, But ere we part, e wis thou shall be quit, and there wall he laughed, and made cheer, and told his tale, as ye shall after hear. THE TALE A prentice, will whom dwelt in our city, and of a craft of victuallers was he, galliard he was, as goldfinch in the shaw, Brown as berry, a proper sort fellow, With lockers black combed full fetishly, And dance he could so well and jollily, That he was called Perkin Reveller. He was full of love and paramour, As is the honeycomb of honey sweet. Well was the wench that with him might meet. At every bridal would he sing and hop, he better loved the tavern than the shop. For when there any riding was in cheap, Out of the shop thither he would leap, And till that he had all the sight he seen, And danced well, he would not come again, And gathered him a meany of his sort, To hop and sing and make such disport, As there they set Steven for to meet, To plan at dice in such a street. For in the town there was no prentice That fairer could cast a pair of dice Than Perkin could, And thereto he was free of his dispense In place of privity, That found his master well in his chaffar, for oftentimes he found his box full bare. For soothly a prentice revelor that haunteth dice, riot, and paramour, 
his master shall it in his shop a be. All that he had no part in the minstrelry, for theft and riot they be convertible. All can they play on gittern or ribble. Rebel and truth, as in a low degree, they be full wroth all day, as men may see. This jolly prentice with his master bold, till he was nigh out of his prenticehood, all were he snubbed, both early and late, and sometimes led with rebel to Newgate. But at the last his master him bethought upon a day when he his paper sought of a proverb that saith this same word, Better is rotten apple out of hoard than it should rot all in the remnant. So fares it by a riotous servant. It is well less harm to let him pace than he shend all the servants in the place. Therefore his master gave him acquittance, and bade him go with sorrow and mischance, and thus this jolly prentice had his lev. Now let him riot all the night or leave. And for there is no thief without a luke that helpeth him to wasten and to souk of that he bribe can or borrow may. Anon he sent his bed and his array unto a compare of his own sort that loved dice and riot and disport, and had a wife that held for countenance a shock and swived for her sustenance. So ends The Cook's Tale.